So, let's get started. So, how many of you already know this sanitation service chain? Oh wow, only so many? Okay, right, so this is called as sanitation service chain and in few cases it's also called as sanitation value chain. So, what is happening there? That is called interface or capture. This tank is called containment. This is emptying and transportation. This is treatment. This is reuse. So, that is the service chain. And the reason why I am talking about this is that as you can see, there is you, you don't see any sewer lines in right? There is no sewage. It's called an on-site sanitation system. What do you mean by an on-site sanitation system? Huh? Away from original place. On the site itself. Right? So, in case of on-site sanitation systems or sanitation systems where the waste is somewhere near the toilet itself. It's not moving very far away. What is the other system that we know? Offside. Offside, true. And the only system that we know is a sewage system, right? So, a sewerage system, sewerage is the network of pipes and what passes through that is sewage, right? So, a sewer system or sewerage and what passes through that is sewage. So, and that is the only offside system that we know of. And let's see why we have to focus on fecal sludge management. The reason why I call it fecal sludge management or is it movement is the question we will come to that very soon. For example, what is happening in terms of whatever the classes that you have had so far. So you have your sewage network and the sewage is passing through that and what happens at the end of it? Hmm? What happens at the end of it? What What is there at the end of the sewer? Hmm? What is there at the end of the sewer network? Some kind of treatment system. What else? Water bodies. Right? So, just, just to give you an understanding of what is happening with respect to our country, okay? How, how much of India is urbanized? Hmm? 40 percent. Okay. Two more guesses. 32 point odd percent is urbanized. And actually rural areas, you cannot find super network in most of the rural areas. Even in urban areas, only how much of urban area is super, do you think? 16. Hmm? 30 percent. One third of urban area. So, would you consider LLP to be an urban place or a rural place? Hmm? Would you consider it to be urban or rural? Is it a town or a village? Town. It's definitely a town, right? So, it could be classified as an urban area. Is there a sewer network here? And this is the case for almost 70% of urban regions in our country. So, if 30% is urban, only 30% of that 30% is sewer. So, what aspect, if you really look at the whole India, how much of India is sewer then? What is 30% of 30? 10%, right? 30% is urban, in that only 30% has sewer lines. So, only 10% has sewer network, whole of India, 10%. And Pollution Control Board says that only 70% of the sewage that actually gets into the sewer networks is treated adequately. What is 70% of 10%? So, more or less 90 to 93% of the waste generated in this country on a daily basis ends up somewhere without treatment. Correct? Isn't that fascinating? 1.3 billion people. Every day. We all have to poop. Right? It's, it's the necessity of life. That's the reality of life, right? And that's one thing that I can say that we have in common. We may not read similar books, but we have to use toilet. I know that, right? So, when that is the case, 1.3 billion people, 
So almost 1.2 billion people, their waste is going out in the environment without any treatment. And 1.2 billion people is the combined population of whole of North American continent plus some of the countries in South America, more or less whole of African continent, or Europe plus other countries. Okay, that is 1.2 billion for you. And it is just going somewhere. It's like you. It's vanishing as soon as we. So that is where I'm saying, is it management or movement right now? It's mostly movement because we are not really treating it. You're just moving waste from one place to another. The interesting part when it comes to sewage is that you can actually track how the sewage goes, right? So you, you know where your uh, large canals are and most of the drains, they flow in only one direction. What is that direction? It's usually based on gravity, right? Like why do we convert our rivers into sewer lines? It's easy. Gravity, yeah, topography, right? So gravity helps. So we just send it to a particular type of canal or a really large whatever drain that uses gravity to flow. And in case of sewage, it makes it easy. At least you know where the drains are. But when it comes to on-site systems, your waste gets stored in a pit, whatever. We will get to that. It gets stored somewhere. And then what do you usually do? You call somebody to come and empty it. Okay, let's assume that there is a truck that is actually coming to empty it. And I'm assuming that you know all these, I, I know that all these other types of sanitation systems have been covered, treatment types have been covered, so that's why I'm focusing very much on fecal sludge management. So, my toilet is connected to a pit, I call a truck operator, and that truck operator comes and empties it. Okay? And now, what does that person do? That person doesn't have to follow gravity. Right? That person can just take that sludge with him, wherever he wants. It's a gravity defying act with the help of diesel, when you think about it. So, the interesting aspect of fecal sludge management in India is that it has become a new mechanism to shift risk socially, spatially and temporally. What I mean by this is that, socially in the sense, sanitation work in India is still done by a specific subcast among Dalit castes. Okay, and even after the arrival of trucks, some of the pits need to be opened in specific ways because sludge would have dried. We will, we will get to all of that in detail for you to help to understand. So it is still done by, the drudgery of actual work is still done by people who belong to a specific social class. So that's why I said we shift that risk. Why? Because that risk shifting is happening because they are not paid well. They have to get exposed to certain types of health risks. So that's why I'm saying that it's a socially I'm shifting risk. Spatially I'm shifting risk. What I mean by that is that my waste from my pet is just going and ending up somewhere in another place. There is no management happening. There is no treatment happening. It is just going and ending in some other place. That's why I'm just shifting waste from one place to another place using track as a mechanism, spatial movement. So we, we keep talking about open defecation, right? Oh, India should get rid of open defecation. Oh, look at those people. Yeah, if those people go out in the field, it's perfect. We can go, we can shame them, we can ask them to use toilets. But as long as the waste from our toilets go and end up in our canals or lakes, it's more or less the same. When the waste from a pit gets emptied and gets dumped by a truck, it's as good as 4,000 people defecating in open at a time. That's what it is, but we wouldn't even think about that. Oh, it's all mechanized and it's going somewhere. But it is actually worse than OD in, in some cases when you think about it. So that's where I mean spatial. And temporarily we are shifting risk in the sense it's very similar to climate change. When 1.2 billion people are just sending their waste out without any treatment, it will come back to bite us. If not today, Sometime in future, our children or grandchildren will get affected by the environmental quality at some point. You know, it's just, we are delaying it, that's it. But it will come back to bite humanity. So that's what I mean by these three things. So, 
In a way, I don't know how many of you have heard of something called as an F diagram. Have you heard of F diagram? F diagram is a way in which we talk about feces on one end. Okay? On the other end, you have a new person who gets infected on the right hand side. Left hand side you have feces and on the right hand side you have a person who becomes a victim of some waterborne disease. So the challenge why we need to manage waste. Oh, wh why do we have to manage waste by the way? Why should we care about managing human waste? What is the primary reason? Hygiene. Hmm? Hygiene. Hygiene. Yes. Okay. Hmm? Health. See, the thing is that we can become the carriers. We are the vectors of some of the waterborne diseases. Our bodies can carry certain pathogens which when we defecate can actually spread to other places. And with speed, once I defecate, right, it could be my hands, which is fingers. Again, F diagram is all about FFF fingers. It could be somewhere in the field, somebody might be walking barefoot. It could be things like fomites, which is a towel or some kind of a cloth or something like that, or food for that matter, fingers. So through this, it can reach another person. Fluids is another F. It can reach another person. So that was the definition of F diagram. Okay. But now, as you can see, a badly managed sanitation adds to that hazard. You know, so that's where badly contained, you know, badly transported, badly treated, or badly reused. So all along that service chain, if you don't do certain things properly, that itself can become a hazard which can go and affect someone else. The interesting thing is this, that when we talk about, oh, health, how many of you have been sick? Because of, we all know that 1.2 billion people are defecating and sending their waste out. How many of us have been sick here? How many of you have been affected by any waterborne disease in the recent past? Do you even know anybody who lost a child to a waterborne illness? It's interesting, right? Like the kind of people we surround ourselves. We are so privileged, though so much of pollution is happening, somebody is getting affected, but it's not us. So that is the other interesting part. When all of this is happening, there is again another section of society which is actually paying the cost of all of this. So that's also something that I want you to realize. We are actually benefiting. How many of you had to go out in the open? I'm assuming none of you, right? I never had to. So I have the benefit of using a toilet, but my family has never suffered the burden. Nobody has been ill, but somebody is actually bearing this burden somewhere. We are not even sure of that. So we have actually in a way appropriated someone else's comfort and dignity and health and claiming that for ourselves. So that is what has become, these sanitation systems have become when we don't learn to manage them properly. That's why managing it is so important because not only it not affects our health, it affects health of someone else altogether. It's just like you eating sugar and someone else getting diabetes. You know, would you be upset? that I eat all the fat and sugar and you become obese? It's worse than that, right? Like, and also, the thing is this, when I get sick, we all have this way of, I have sick leaves, I don't have to worry about it, right? But think about a daily wage earner. If that person doesn't actually do that living for that day, then it's a huge issue, right? He wouldn't eat. So those are some of the repercussions of bad sanitation. You know, it's not just about, oh, health. Yeah, but whose health is also something you need to think about. So, going forward, let's first try to understand what happens when these pits fill up. How is India currently managing when pits fill up? And then we will go to the solutions. Okay? You had a question? No. Okay. So, the reason is, as I said, only 10% of India is sewer, right? That is 30% of urban India is sewer. Mm -hmm. Almost half of urban India is dependent on septic tanks. Okay? And septic tanks, 
They will. What happens if you keep using septic tank? Why do they fill up? It's a tank. Eventually it has to fill up. So, how many of you live in a place which you think is connected to a septic tank? Okay. Among the students, okay. Has it ever been full? Hmm? So, when it is full, what do you usually do? Desludge. How do we desludge? Hmm? You contact municipality and they come and do it. Okay. These are the private agencies. And in some cases, it's also done by manual. Yeah, MTA is also there. How do we find these people? These private truck operators. How do we find them? Hmm? Where? I have never seen them on television. See, almost half of urban India is dependent on septic tanks and you guys don't even know where to find a truck operator if the pit is full. And that is the reality. There is no one place to find them actually. You know? And what they have done is these truck operators have found really innovative ways of advertising themselves. Can you see what might be happening there in that picture? Maybe it's way too far. So actually their numbers are written on this electric pole, on that compound wall. It's from Guntur. I don't know whether any of you can read Telugu. Maybe it might be too uh, far away from wherever you are sitting. So it is saying septic tank cleaner and then it has its number. Okay. In different towns, this kind of advertising happens differently. Advertising in a newspaper or a television is very expensive. But this is a very essential service. They know that people will notice this. So they do this. Or what they usually do is they park their trucks in a busy intersection. Okay, whenever they are having lunch or something like that, they make sure that they park their trucks in a busy intersection. And many of the operators, they have multiple trucks. So when one of the trucks is not really servicing, again, they park them in specific places because the truck itself becomes a advertisement. Right? And they actually hand out business cards in these neighborhoods. And they also put these pamphlets in the newspapers. So they have their own ways of reaching out to their customers. Okay? And of course, let's say you find one of the truck operators, you call them. Interestingly, they also have their own ways of manipulating the caller. For example, when the pit is full, okay, so you are desperate. It all depends. Probably, see, in your case, it's very different. In my case, of course, my family, this is the best age sometimes. You don't have to worry about a pit being full. Probably, your parents will take care of that. You know, in my case, I have to call the truck operator. And there are some operators in Bangalore who would list two or three numbers. Okay? The first number, he would always say, no sir, we are completely booked. Second number, no sir, we are completely booked. It is the same person. Okay? Third number, you call him and he's like, yes. And you don't even want to negotiate. <laughs> Because you are so desperate. You know, you are like, yeah, sure. So, there are such interesting business models when it comes to how they manage this business and the way they play with psychology. Because your toilet is backing up, your wife is upset with you, your parents are pissed. You know, you don't want to keep on negotiating for 500 rupees. You're like, please come right away. Right? So, that is one way. Another interesting model is that some people, they don't even own trucks. They list their numbers. I call you. And then you call the trucks and you negotiate. You, you don't even own trucks. You just have a phone number. Okay, so there are also such business models where the trucks... So uh, what I want you to understand in this case is the informality. As you said, you don't know where to find them. And when you find them, you have no idea whether the truck really belongs to that person or not. And these people, they buy trucks from each other. So sometimes, let's say I was owning the truck and I started YRS, right? So this is the truck, let's say. I started this business. My driver is the one who is driving around, right? He knows the business better than I do. So he will start his own business. Okay? Undercutting me, he will start his own business because he knows the business so well 
that I end up losing more than half of my business. And they end up buying used trucks from other people. They wouldn't change, even change the names. Because it's not required. It's better to have a truck in a, someone else's lane when you're violating things. Right? Because you have to dump it somewhere. We will come to that. Okay? So now, next is I call them. I'm desperate. I'm willing to pay you whatever you want. Okay? And how many different types of pits do we can we usually find? Any idea? What types of pits are there? Shapes. Let's think about shapes. Circular? Square. Square. Right? So, the typical capacity of a truck is about 4,000 liters. Okay? And the way they charge you, if you have rings, they charge you by the number of rings. Each ring is about I would say 16 inches, slightly more than a, slightly less than one and a half feet. You know? So each ring, either they will charge you by ring or they will charge you for the volume based on which house they are going. And again, there is no real way for you to know whether the tank that comes to your house, whether it has any water or sludge earlier, because the indicator starts at about half of the tank. So that's also another thing. I will show you the indicator at a later point. So they come to you, they empty your truck. But the challenge is this. Where is the septic tank? Many people wouldn't even know. You ask the shape, when it was last emptied and things like that. And some people wouldn't even know. They would be like, I don't know. Even before my grandfather was born or something. Right? Like The answers are fascinating. And same thing happens once the truck guy comes to your house. Okay, you will be in office, your wife will be at home, and she is like, I have no idea where our septic tank is. <laughs> okay, because some of them get emptied once in seven years, once in ten years. You know, we forget the floods that happened last year, such a devastating flood. Do you remember, really remember the septic tank of your own house? Many people don't. So these people, they have to go looking for that. You know, so that itself, they charge you extra to find the septic tank. Okay? Because they really have to dig because once they know where the toilet types are coming out, they have to start digging and they will eventually end up finding it. Okay? They, they know this business really well. So once you do that, it comes in different shapes and it's made of different things, right? So what are the different ways in which septic tanks, as you said, circular? It could be watertight, it need not be watertight. If, what if it is not watertight? What happens? Hmm? It leaches. So what happens to the solids? It stays there. And after 10 years, all the water is gone. What is left? Just this monolith, right? Like this hard concrete-like block. It can be very hard to break. Can a truck really suck it out? So, what do we do now? Hmm? Yeah, I can add water, but it's not boost, no? I can just add water and like mix it up, no? <laughs> right? It's not. It's like it's so, it's like a rock. So what happens is, the reason why I'm telling you these things is because, just because there is a truck, don't assume that it's all magic. You know, a truck can only suck a liquid of a specific viscosity, right? Like I heard many of your engineers, so you understand what viscosity is. So it cannot really suck solid. Okay? So that means it has to be broken. It's really hard. So it is manually actually broken, then you add water, and then you suck it. Okay? That's where you need manual labor. Can you guess where, are, where else you might need manual labor? Even if the sludge is not completely solidified, where else you might need it? Hmm? Remote areas. Remote areas. Huh? For the drains. For the drains, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking more in terms of the pits itself. Let's stick to the pits. Yes, drains, probably. Where the truck itself cannot, if the roads are narrow, let's say, maybe you cannot drive the truck. Even if you can drive the truck, in some places, the toilet is in the backyard. Probably the pipe cannot go all the way there. You know, it, it usually the range is about 150 to 200 feet on a flat ground. So the pipe cannot reach there. So in some cases, 
even if the truck can reach, the toilet is not accessible, is all I am trying to say. Even if this sludge is not solidified, it still cannot easily be emptied by a truck. So we still are dependent. So why is that happening? We will come back to that. But remember, why is it that happening? Okay, that some septic tank is not accessible, somewhere sludge is, has completely solidified. So why? You need to keep that in mind. I will come back to that question. What could be the reason why it is varying? Okay. And in some cases, some people might have told you that they empty once in six months and some people might have told you they empty once in seven years. So what do you think is happening to the sludge that you are emptying once in six months in terms of composition? It will be quite fresh, right? Compared to something that you have to empty once in three years, compared to something that you have to empty once in seven or ten years. Okay? And again, we will come to this. The longer it stands, there is something called as digestion that happens. We will come to that. Okay? So, in few cases, it's a lot easier to find. It's just a small lid that you have to open. And it's very easy, very clean. So, there is also that way of empty so that happens and once they are transporting it so now when they are transporting it interesting things happen the police they just stop them for one or other reason you know so i i work with them very closely and uh, this is like you might you might recognize this picture like he's actually talking to a police officer there and it was a very polite conversation you know i have never seen police so polite you know, he got down, he just handed 100 rupees and he asked something and he just said something, he came back, it was so quick. And that's it, he said, sir, if they want, they can stop us for 100 things. And he's just stopping me for whatever reason. But the interesting thing is this, sometimes, sometimes, the van at the back side of the truck, it wouldn't be completely closed. And our roads are quite bad, sometimes it will, it loosens a bit, you know, based on the bumpy roads. Then what happens? Sludge starts to leak and in some cases of course there is wind so it can go and flash, splash some people who are actually riding behind the truck. Right? It can happen. But, but the interesting thing is this, the person who is actually riding behind the truck wouldn't go and tell the truck driver that okay your valve is leaking, tighten it. No. In India, how do we resolve conflicts? We drag people, right? Like, the justice is served there and then, right? So imagine the kind of harassment they go through. I'm not saying that every truck operator gets beaten. I'm not saying that. But they get beaten for something that they could have just communicated. You know, and human waste is a taboo. That's a nice ringtone, by the way. Uh, so, human waste is a taboo, and if it gets spilled on your face, you would be very upset because we don't even wear helmets, no? It, right? Of course, it's very upsetting when it right, ends right on your face. So, when this happens, they get beaten up. There is violence in that sense, you know, and people can do lot of crazy things because this person also belongs to a caste who you loathe, you know, and it is someone else's waste. Look at what he has done to you. You are totally okay touching him and beating him there and then because you want to teach him a lesson. And then where do you dispose? So it's very easy to make a phone call, right, unlimited tax. You, you can, you, even you can call a truck operator just like that for fun. Right? And he comes, he finds your uh, pit, he empties it. Where should he take it now? Where do you think they take it? Hmm? Do you guys even think about these things? When you use your toilet, do you ever worry where the water comes from and where the water goes? Do you guys know how screwed your generation is? is actually right now you're like we have messed it up for you to be very honest climate change is coming for you okay 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just Game of Thrones last season. <laughs> yeah, the monsoon is coming in Kerala, right? It's not winter. <laughs> it's coming. And then, we are messing up the environment for you, and you are not even thinking about any of these things. <laughs> right? Do you know, like, okay, where, where, where are you guys put up? Like, any idea where the where water is coming from and where is it? Okay, probably you know where it is going. Where is the water coming from? Where is it going? See, that is the thing. That there is this ignorance. And because of that, we really don't know what is happening to our waste. Once we flush, we think it just disappears. It has to go to a sewer line or it has to go to a pit. These are the only two options. And in, in this case, we know that there is no pit. Sorry, sewer line. There is a pit and that pit has to get emptied. Now it has to get dumped somewhere. So, if you were the truck operator, let's say, where would you dump it? Let's play that game. Right? Where, would, where should we dump it? Let's say we all own a business together. Hmm? As far as possible, as near, like as far. See, if I go very far, then I can only service probably one house. Less populated area. Less populated area. Okay. Hmm? I mean, it should be fuel efficient. It should be fuel efficient. We should have like Tesla trucks emptying. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so what is it? What is it that you are trying to do? You don't have a place to dump it. But you know that people will be very pissed if they know that you are dumping. Right? Like even if it splashes, then you are upset. So what would you do? You will find places where people don't see you. It could be far, it could be close. Right? So there are different ways of doing that. And in a place like Bangalore, what truck operators do is that uh, <clears throat> they use, that is called curiosity, by the way. Okay? She wouldn't be super interested when her teacher is telling her something about math or science. She's like, but what exactly is happening here? <laughs> now, that is the type of enthusiasm we need in our students. So now she is a real student. Even outside the class, she is learning. You know? So, this is a sewer line, and this septic tank is actually dumping waste into the central sewer line. Easy solution, right? So, from the outskirts, take it to the central line where you have access. Thinking this is illegal, you cannot do that. But this is the real country, right? They keep talking about the US as the land of the brave home of the free. Actually, it is India when you really think about it. You know, you can do whatever you want. Uh, and actually, it's for educational purposes. This guy is doing that, you know. <laughs> they don't teach much in their school. I might as well just get them interested in something. So that is one way of dumping. Another way is called agricultural reuse. Again, this is in the outskirts of Bangalore. You know, the land use is slowly changing, so there are still some farmers. And human waste is a fantastic fertilizer. Okay? And also when you have to suck it, you, you will mix it with water. So you need water, so it's a great fertilizer in different ways. So, you can use that, you can dump it in a, in a field. Or, right next to the road. You no, know, in the outskirts. Right, like there is nobody. It's not very far, it's not very close, but there is nobody who would object. So these are the different ways. As you can see, R, this is again on the side of the road. It has completely dried up because it's also a hot country. It doesn't take much time for the water to evaporate. You know, it will seep, seep into the ground or it will evaporate. So this is how it looks. Or you can take it to a farmland again. You know, so there are different ways of disposing this. In all these cases, there is no treatment, right? It is direct dumping. So, so where is the treatment, right? So that is what the point I'm trying to make. So India has about 9,000 towns and cities. How many fecal sludge treatment plants do we have in area? They all are quite new and we have just about 16 operational right now. 
and all of them came into operation just in last one year, more or less. So 9,000 towns and cities, only 16, and that too, they are catering to very specific neighborhoods, not to all the neighborhoods. So that is the situation, you know, in terms of treatment. So, <clears throat> but there are some people who are reusing this in really innovative manners, right? What would you prefer? The waste ending up right next door or waste ending up in a field where it is actually reused, right? And the thing is this, the reuse is very interesting in the sense that there are people who have created pits where you go and dump it in this pit, you know? And sometimes a pig is also dead in the same pit, as you can see. And uh, then once it is full, you allow it to dry for a bit and then you use it in different fields, you know? You can grow banana, grapes, different things because the challenge is this. Though farm owner loves it, farm workers, they don't want to touch it. Farm owner, he loves it because he gets better yield, right? So I am very happy to use it. But if I ask my workers, they don't want to do that. How many of you have observed that the domestic help that comes to your house will sweep, will even clean the bathroom floor, they won't clean the toilet, right? In the same way, in many places, domestic help is not allowed to use the toilet. That's another case altogether. So touching human waste is a huge taboo. And based on the caste of the worker, some workers, they don't even want to go there. So, Interestingly, this farmer was super happy with the bananas. And the way he uses it is through, he is a very rich farmer. So how would he use it then? And he loves stickle stretch. He is, look at it, he is so happy. <laughs> right? Have you ever seen a happier person? He is like happy that people are shitting gold. <laughs> you know, for him, it's like, he is so happy. So, now tell me, if your workers are not interested in touching it, but you see a lot of value in human waste, what would you do? How would you use it? Hmm? <coughs> Ideas, people. Automation is coming. Most of you won't have jobs either, by the way. So you have to be very creative. Huh? Even if it is organic, my workers won't touch it. How would I use it? So, I am a rich farmer. I have access to machines. Right? So, I can use machines to apply fertilizer. But the thing is, to do that, the whole field has to be clear. So, I can apply this only once, right before I actually sow the seeds. I cannot do it in the middle of the crop season. Okay? So, he does that. He has access to machines and he does that because his workers, these are the workers. They have like, no. <laughs> we are not interested in touching it. Okay? But they said that, you know, yes, we know that we are walking on this ground where this guy has actually applied all of this, but they were talking about, see how most of the banana leaves, they fall and it creates a kind of a carpet and they have no problems. That is one way. Another way, what is happening here? Huh? In India, cow is holy, right? So, I will just mix it with cow manure. People wouldn't even... See, the thing is that I am not saying that everybody is doing these things. I am giving you some examples of how things are done in the field because people have really realized the value of fecal fudge. So reuse is a reality. It's already happening. Wastewater is being used in the periphery of some of the larger cities to grow all types of vegetables and greens. And these farmers, they love fecal fudge and they are using it in very innovative ways. The problem is this. The problem is that sometimes the workers wouldn't even know what they are actually handling. And if the farm labor is actually shifting more and more towards females because men are finding jobs in nearby towns in construction in some or the other small industry tile cutting that this all of that but women are ending up 
working more and more in the farmlands and they are also responsible for taking care of children and older people you know yeah women are like yeah we understand isn't that sad when you think about it and also majority of the agriculture that happens in our country is rain fed there is no water to wash as soon as you do your job okay and you have to drink water while you are working some people smoke some people chew pan all these things happen right and if they don't know then they are actually getting exposed to a different set of diseases so that is something that we have to be aware of when we think about reuse